In today's video, we're taking a look at the all new Eashin Tiny Hawk 2. Now, it's not so new, it's been out for a couple months now, maybe around two months. However, I've received mine about two weeks ago and I've been using it for the past week and I'm ready to give in my review. So, we're gonna cover a couple things. We're gonna cover the overall new design and what are the benefits and if we actually did benefit anything. Also, the batteries, what you should really use and what seems to work just better than the others. Some of the things they provide you with and also some of the things I'd highly recommend on the side, which are compatible with a lot of other things if you're gonna be getting into this type of size now let's talk about the quadcopter itself now this thing could run both 1s and 2s however i highly recommend you just fly on 1s you get more flight time and it just performs great especially indoors this thing is absolutely beautiful and it's just rock solid if you've ever purchased one plugged in the battery and not even put your goggles on just put it in angle mode and hover it you would have seen how stable this thing is it just takes off and just keeps its position and it's fairly quiet which is something really nice not a lot of micros do that some are just noisy as hell but the quieter the quadcopter is the more efficient it is that means each propeller is getting clean air thus giving you efficiency and in this case uh this needs as much efficiency as possible because the Emax tiny hawk line still has one big problem in my opinion even though it's not a deal breaker it is a lipo puffer this thing sucks so much amperage and it just eats away batteries i've puffed three batteries with this but again they were cheap batteries so um but yeah you got to be careful with that these things soak up a lot of power flight time is pretty good on 1s uh two minutes to three minutes depending more likely two and two minutes and 20 seconds or so especially if you're pushing it uh which is what i was doing here so flight time is acceptable in my opinion now for the camera something i really love if they actually used a proper camera we're using a run cam nano 2 where you can actually see where the hell you're going so you have a proper flying experience now for the video transmitter i've been running it on 25 milliwatts indoors i do have thick concrete walls however it does pretty good compared to other ones that i've used on 200 milliwatts so that's all i could really say about the video transmitter you can bump it up to 200 milliwatts but if you do you'll get less flight time because the video Video transmitter will take more power so keep that in mind so let's cover some of the design aspects here now they've redesigned the frame due to a couple reasons they've learned a lot from their previous tiny hawk now this one is supposed to take much more impact and last longer and i have noticed that i've been crashing like crazy nothing i haven't broken anything nothing snapped propellers are still the same exact propellers i'm using they do provide you with another set in the box which is really great and for some of the things they provide you with we'll cover that in a bit here now for the motor connection what they've done is you do still have the connectors but they're not using the connector so if you ever need to replace a motor with a connector you can easily do that this time they've actually soldered on which is much better in my opinion however there's also two more wires coming out uh, along with the uh, motor wires here which go to these LED strips as you can tell right there and what those do these are red LED strips are everywhere they don't get in the way they've held their place just fine even th throughout all the crashes and what these do is the more power goes to the motor the LEDs get brighter so that's a nice little touch I guess I mean it doesn't make anything just the aesthetic looks slightly better in my opinion that's about it here now one thing i don't like but i'm actually liking here which is kind of weird which is the connector they should really stop with this proprietary bullshit in my opinion they should really provide you with an xt30 however it's okay in this time because to be honest it flies best on 1s in my opinion so it's totally fine we can let them get away with it here but if they're planning on making any other quadcopter that is a 2s please make everything an xt30 and just you know stay with the, with the current trend stay with the current standards it just makes everybody's life much easier and just much more pleasant instead of having to fiddle around make an adapter have it stick everywhere and just basically ruin the whole flight experience so yeah so we'll just let them get away with this for right now because again it flies best on 1s and you could buy a bunch of these 1s I, these are the ones i use right here i'll have linked down below you get a pack for like 10 bucks or five of them they've lasted quite a while actually and uh, i really like that so yeah just a side note you are uav batteries never buy anything above 1s especially this is the largest you should go the smaller ones are also good the 1s 2s stay away from the 1s hvs are just pretty good so they're the cheapest and they're the best but if you go any but anything above that for us no, nah, they're not really great. They tend to die just out of nowhere. Now, also, Emacs do provide you with two batteries. They give you a 1S 450 milliamp HV, and they also give you a 2S HV. That's 300 milliamps, and uh, you could choose whatever you want. But don't forget to change your PID profile to 2 and your rate profile to 2 uh, if you're going to fly 2S. If you're going to fly 1S, bring back your PID profile to 1 and your rate profile to 1 to have the best experience. Now, for charger, they also do provide you with a USB charger. You can plug them in right here or right here, depending on which battery you're using. If you're going to be charging the 2S, you plug it right here. If you're charging the 1S, 
you could charge it right here. Now, in regards of charging batteries, these, I don't know if you guys have seen this before, I've covered it a couple times on the channel. Uh, this is what I use to charge these batteries. So this one right here charges six at one time. It charges both HV and normal batteries, uh, just 1S batteries. And what's really unique about this, is it takes both AC and DC. So you can take it to the field or you can just plug it into the wall and it remembers the settings. And you can even set the charge current. I usually set everything to one amp. And then once I plug it in, it remembers everything. So I just plug these in and it just starts charging immediately, which is really nice, especially when you could charge six at one time. Uh, you just get a lot more time in the air and they're very, very useful. Now, for example, you had 1S and 2S batteries. You could also buy one of these. Now, this charges a maximum of four batteries at a time. However, the slight twist here is it can also charge 2S right there and it can charge 1S. It'll automatically detect the 1S and 2S once you plug it in and you can set it to HV, which is high volt or just normal LiPos, which again, I highly recommend and also takes both AC and DC it takes two to four S LiPo and also a wall output. And they do provide you with this side as well. So these are really great and I highly recommend them. And I've been using them for the past year, I think. I don't know, I've gotten them a long, long time ago. And these are the things I always have next to me and I use, especially for these types of quadcopters. Now, they also do provide you with the carrying case if I missed to say that. However, there's also something you need to take into consideration about the receiver. Now, the receiver is a D8 receiver. You could run D16, but you cannot run D16 on the latest FR Sky transmitter. So yeah, just yeah, just take a note of that. So you're gonna have to use a multi-protocol module such as this. I'll have these linked down below. You can get a couple of them. I'll have the fat ones and also the light ones like this one linked down below to the ones that I highly recommend and I've been using for the past couple years. Now, I also tried something different. Now, out of the box, it's set to D8. I change it to D16 and I've set this to the old protocol of FR Sky to D16. The range is terrible. So stay on D8. It comes D8 automatically, but I just wanted to test that. It is absolutely terrible on D16. So yeah, just stay on D8 and uh, you're going to need a multi-protocol module if you have the latest FR Sky transmitters, the, the latest generation of FR Sky transmitters here. And overall, it's a great flying experience. So now some of the cons about this is that it's very amp hungry and it could puff batteries. So be careful on your flight time. Don't fly more than two minutes or so, depending on how you're flying or keep an eye on the voltage. And uh, but these things take a lot of current to fly. And that's the thing that really bothers me, but it's not a deal breaker. You still get two minutes plus of flight time. Yeah, so keep that in mind. They also give you extra rubber bands. As you can tell, these are rubber bands here. They extend to put in your battery and the battery holds very well. So the overall design is really great. And, um, and again, the only thing I really don't like is how power hungry they are. But other than that, this thing is, is a stable beast in the air and you're not going to be having to fight this anytime soon. And well, that's it guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll have everything linked down below. If you guys want to go ahead and check those out, those greatly support the channel. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out guys.